Lead Roy A. Sanderson just on time, so we're going to have a little extra basketball here. Railers and Moline in overtime tied at 46. It'll be Gavin Block jumping center against Derek Stabler. But Josh, a big number for the Railers is with Edward Bowlby. Yeah, it's four fouls on Ed, and he's uh, got 14 big points and a guy that uh, does a lot of the rebounding underneath for the Railers, and that's what's hurt us has been the rebounding in the second half. I got a feeling Tyler Horsham is going to come up big here. Underneath, Gavin turns, goes against Stabler. Now he needs some help. Back in the corner to Pod Belsick. Pod Belsick out to Horsham. Tyler looked, didn't take. Now remember, the Railers, you got plenty of timeouts. Three timeouts left. Uh, Coach Al saves them. Bowlby for three. That's no good. Rebound high going up for it. And Will's going to be whistled for the reach in foul as he tried to take it away from Stabler. Pod picks up his third. Moline going to the line. Yeah, not a smart foul by the senior. Uh, you send him to the line, uh, you don't want to send him to the line and get easy baskets. And uh, here Will fouls, uh, well, however long the court is, was almost as long as the foul was. So not a good one, and uh, a free throw shooter goes to the free throw line for Moline. Stable around the night, he has six. He is two of four so far tonight. Free throw, missed it. Rebound, and they're going to get yeah. Owens on that one, and Railers are heading to the line. Hey, too. we'll take it. Uh, not a smart foul by uh, Pod Belsick. It works in our favor where he misses, and now not a smart foul by Owens as he comes back and fouls. So uh, I think he's got to be close to four fouls. I mean, Jeff, yeah, four on the point guard for Moline Owens, and now Bowlby uh, stepping to the line, shooting one in the bonus. Bowlby with 14. He's hit both his free throws there tonight. Ed's free throw on the way. It is up, and and crawls off, no good. So each team misses the front end of a one and bonus. And we're 30 seconds into overtime and we're almost back where we started. Yeah, two opportunities for the Railers and uh, no points so far. Owens, over to Wood. Back up now to Owens, right side to Biscontine. And you gotta think they're gonna try and, try and hold it and we'll do what they've been doing is holding it and then all of a sudden get the ball in the middle, kick it out to a shooter and make it. So. That's been working for the Maroon so far. Uh, I would assume they're going to do the same thing. Owens near the timeline. Under three minutes to go in overtime. Owens. Yeah, travel. And we've got traveling on guess who? Owens again. Yeah, he traveled. He wanted to pass to the corner, to the middle. Sorry, he wanted to pass to the middle. We covered it up real quick, and then he tried to pass uh, to the baseline and already picked up his pivot foot and land it again. So not a very good start to the overtime for both teams, but uh, the Railers with the ball still tied. Max at the top of the key. Dribbles on the outside of the lane. Bowlby hands to Pod Belsick. Two and a half to go. Boy, Bowlby would have turned and looked at the basket. He was wide open. Pod Belsick hands to Gavin. Gavin's going to drive in. Nobody gets in his way. Flips it up. Contact. No call. Rebound down to Vice for the Maroons. Yeah, another, uh, another strong layup. Uh, just couldn't get it to go. A little bit of contact in there, but I don't know it. at the overtime. Are they going to call that, that stuff now? Wood to Owens. 2.10 to go. No one has scored here in the extra session. Yeah, right now nobody wants to win it. <laughs> Owens directing traffic. Viscontine holds near the logo at center court. Two minutes halfway through this overtime. Again, tied at 46. Some tired railers and tired maroons out there, but... Yeah, they're going to battle through it, and uh, the one that might be the most is Pod Belsick's been playing the point for a long time now, and uh, and hopefully he doesn't uh, just get lethargic and, and try and cheat on something. Vice caught it at the free throw line. you got to wonder if they're going to hold it because he didn't even turn and look at the basket because Stabler's been floating along the baseline the entire time. Owens looks to make a move. They flip it across to Wood. He's open for a three. Rattles off no good, and there's Ma Gavin with a huge rebound in front of Vice. Yeah, you're telling what, you know, no kidding there. That was a big rebound in traffic, too. And uh, now it's time for the Railers to uh, get a timeout and uh, get something set up to where we can get a score here and uh, get in control of this overtime. They're taking time. We'll take it with them. 1.16 to go. Tied at 46. Back in a moment with more. Wayne Knight along with Josh Komnick, Jeff Benjamin with you. Tied at 46. 1.16 left in our overtime. We uh, checked the scoreboard, Josh. Uh, Railers look like they have three timeouts, Moline with two. Mm -hmm. And uh, those could be important here as uh, we head down the stretch because uh, anything and everything is important possession-wise. We look over, alternating possession would go to Moline. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, i like to just end this thing right here. We got the possession with a minute and 14 left. Let's keep it and uh, see if we can hold it. 
and get the last second shot and make it. Well, we've seen Moline be, right now they're in man. Yeah. And we've seen Moline, when we get in these end of quarter situations, flip to a zone. Yeah, and you gotta, you gotta pay attention to what's going on and coaches gotta pay attention with the timeouts. We got plenty of them. We get in trouble, let's use it. Horsham, 50 seconds to go. Picked up his dribble now to Bowlby. Bowlby on the left sideline, double team comes and it's stolen away by Stabler. And now Moline with the steal has a chance to get the final shot. 30 seconds to go. No fouls. Railers with uh, what they thought was going to be a chance to get their final look at the basket. And now Moline after the steal. Yeah, the Railers D is going to have to come up big again. Down to 13. And there is a steal. Max with the steal. Max pulls it back out. Max takes it down the sideline. Kicks it in the corner. Horsham's three. Yes! Get back. Get back. Yes, baby. We've been waiting for him to hit one, Jeff, and we got it. Yeah, they're, they're talking about extra time now, but this is, I, I don't like this at all. It's the extra time stuff when you don't have a uh, replay to go back to. I, 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 well, I know you got three officials, and and somebody is uh, somebody is supposed to check the time, I'm sure. But uh, how are you watching what's going on with the excitement going around you? And also, one guy's got to watch the clock, or the clock, the coach, the guy taking it out of bounds. I mean, it's uh, it's tough to. Now they put 3.9, an extra second back on the clock. Well, I tell you, Josh, in all the years of doing the games with uh, former uh, partner Tom Larry, uh, Tom would always talk about when we get in situations like this that it was what they were told as officials was if you are not 100% sure yeah. what the clock said, you can't change the time. And, and then he'd say, and the point of that being is, if you've got all six eyes watching the action, just like you said, right. how can anybody be sure? And you don't want, you know, I, I think for, for a lot of the part anymore, they take the coach's word for it, the opposing coaches, but how many times has that gone against us this year? Oh, I yeah, mean, just going time. back, yeah, almost every time they've added time back on the clock, and whether we've been at home or on the road, uh, it, it doesn't matter. We've we've been uh, against that almost all year with at least a second or two going back on the clock. But the thing we talk about, Tyler Horsham coming up with yeah, a huge, huge three. three. And now, how many times tonight have we been whistled for a foul attempting a three? Well, and, and don't take away from what Max Cook got to steal. You know, yeah. that doesn't happen without Max Cook getting a steal. Timeout taken by the Railers, so they kind of see how the thing was set up. So, again... Edward Bowlby had a pass stolen away. Looked like Moline was going to get the final shot. They were just uh, being real lackadaisical, throwing it out front. Max jumped up, got the steal, found the opening, came across the baseline, kicked it over to Tyler. Tyler hit the three, 3.9 3 to go. Railers up 49-46. A lot of people foul here. A lot of people like to foul. We, uh, we talked this, about in that. In this situation where you've got... I think under anything under two seconds, you don't foul because they've almost got to shoot it right away. But now with 3.9, you've got a chance to foul them. They go to the line. Uh, they've got to make one and miss the other one and get a rebound tip in. So the way they've rebounded against us, I, I don't know. Maybe you foul Vice and he's at the free throw line. It would be a little tougher for him to get in and rebound. But, boy, the way they've rebounded and the way the, the officials at this point in the game put their whistles and, and really take them out of their mouth and don't blow it anything underneath. I don't like it because it's, uh, for me, it's easier to hit a shot on a putback from uh, three or four feet away rather than it is to hit a three at 20, 22 or 23 feet away. Well, and as you talked about, uh, the other thing is Moline has been very, very liberal with the use of their timeouts. It wouldn't surprise me to see a pass to midcourt and right. another timeout. A good point. So you've got Olden, Todd Belsick. Cook, Block, Bowlby on the court for the Railers. Stabler at the far end on the baseline, getting ready to throw this one in and see what's going to happen. Stabler gets it into Owens and a timeout taken at half court. Point nine runs off, so three seconds to go. And they have now used, if I think I see it right, they've used their last timeout. Yeah, that's their last one. So, uh, you know, usually against our defense that it's not a, we don't man up and deny them. Uh, to try and get it in, but let's make him throw it back out that way. You know, take it back toward our basket 
and make them, uh, make them dribble it up and shoot something on the run. Well, we know that the Railers will tell us that they only play zone. But we've seen some occasions this year, especially on out-of-bounds plays, mm -hmm. where everybody's grabbed a man. Is this one of those where well, you Well, I just don't think Coach is. He doesn't want to get beat at something that he's not in the norm of doing. Uh, he's normally going to play the 1-2-2 -two -two on the out-of-bounds. They practice against this, playing the 1-2-2. -two -two. Guys maybe will extend out a little bit farther. I don't think he goes man just because you get beat back door for some reason. We're not used to help side or anything like that. I don't think he does it because our kids aren't used to it. And if you get beat back door... Maybe they start thinking they only need a two. Right. They forget about well, the three. But yeah. I, I, I think he plays the one, two, two, uh, spreads it out a little more. Obviously, a two-pointer doesn't hurt us. Get out around and get out across the line. But but also, you can't uh, you can't let anybody get inside, and you don't have to really worry about the rebounds. Stay outside of, of the three-point line and, and don't foul. We've done that three times a night on three-pointers. Viscontine and Wood, number 10 and number 20, the only ones that have made threes tonight from Olean. Here we go. Stabler. Inbounds to Owens, down to two, fires it up, it's on the way, in oh. and out! Wow. Woo! Owens almost sent us to another overtime as his oh, shot baby. hit the backboard, hit the front of the rim, bounced out, it did everything but go in, and Josh, all the shots the Railers have been doing that tonight where they went in and out, Roy S. Anderson uh, helped us. Came on that. back, yeah, he came back and helped us because we had so many roll out, but that one was really in and out off the bank board from almost half court, and uh, boy, that was a uh, too close for comfort. But the final, Railers 49, Moline 46. Railers improved to 25 and four on the season. Moline falls to 17 and 12. Railers win in overtime, 49-46. We'll be back with our post game in a moment. You're listening to Lincoln Railer Basketball.